Hello, friends. I'm Pastor Pitts Evans. Welcome to the Whole Word Podcast. Let's get right to the Word of God. Friends, when I introduced the book of Jeremiah, I believe I told you that the book itself is not in chronological order. Some of the prophecies appear in print after the time of the prophecies that were before them. They appear to come after, but they really chronologically occurred before. So today we have such a case. In Jeremiah 21, we dealt with prophecies concerning Zedekiah, the king of Judah. In chapter 22, we deal with three of his successors. And this is a compilation of three prophetic words to three of the prior kings of Judah. So let's read now Jeremiah chapter 22. This is what the Lord says, Go down to the palace of the king of Judah and proclaim this message there. Hear the word of the Lord to you, king of Judah, you who sit on David's throne, you and your officials and your people who come through these gates. This is what the Lord says, Do what is right and just, rescue from the hand of the oppressor, the one who has been robbed, do no wrong or violence to the foreigner, the fatherless, or the widow, and do not shed innocent blood in this place. For if you're careful to carry out these commands, then kings who sit on David's throne will come through the gates of this palace, riding in chariots and on horses, accompanied by their officials and their people. But if you do not obey these commands, declares the Lord, I swear by myself that this palace will become a ruin. For this is what the Lord says about the palace of the king of Judah. Though you are like Gilead to me, like the summit of Lebanon, I will surely make you like a wasteland, like towns not inhabited. I will send destroyers against you, each man with his weapons, and they will cut up your fine cedar beams and throw them into the fire. People from many nations will pass by this city and will ask one another, Why has the Lord done such a thing to this great city? And the answer will be, because they've forsaken the covenant of the Lord their God and have worshipped and served other gods. Do not weep for the dead king or mourn his loss. Rather, weep bitterly for him who is exiled, because he will never return nor see his native land again. For this is what the Lord says about Shalom, son of Josiah who succeeded his father as king of Judah, but has gone from this place. He will never return. He will die in the place where they have led him captive. He will not see this land again. Woe to him who builds his palace by unrighteousness, his upper rooms by injustice, making his own people work for nothing, not paying them for their labor. He says, I will build myself a great palace with spacious upper rooms, So he makes large windows in it, panels it with cedar, and decorates it in red. Does it make you a king to have more and more cedar? Did not your father have food and drink? He did what was right and just, so all went well with him. He defended the cause of the poor and needy, so all went well. Is that not what it means to know me, declares the Lord? But your eyes and your heart are set only on dishonest gain on shedding innocent blood, and on oppression and extortion. Therefore, this is what the Lord says about Jehoiakim, son of Josiah, king of Judah. They will not mourn him. Alas, my brother, alas, my sister. They will not mourn him. Alas, my master, alas, his splendor. He will have the burial of a donkey, dragged away and thrown outside the gates of Jerusalem. Go up to Lebanon and cry out. Let your voice be heard in Bashan. Cry out from Abarim, for all of your allies are crushed. I warned you when you felt secure, but you said, I will not listen. This has been your way from your youth. You have not obeyed me. The wind will drive all of your shepherds away, and your allies will go into exile. Then you will be ashamed and disgraced because of all your wickedness. You who live in Lebanon, who are nestled in cedar buildings, how you will groan when pangs come upon you, pain like that of a woman in labor. As surely as I live, declares the Lord, even if you, Jehoiakim, 
son of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, were a signet ring on my hand, I would still pull you off. I will deliver you into the hands of those who want to kill you, those you fear, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon and the Babylonians. I will hurl you and the mother who gave you birth into another country, where neither of you was born, and there you will both die. You will never come back to the land you long to return to. Is this man, Jehoiakim, a despised, broken pot, an object no one wants? Why will he and his children be hurled out, cast into a land they do not know? O oh, land, 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 hear the word of the Lord. This is what the Lord says. Record this man as if childless, a man who will not prosper in his lifetime, for none of his offspring will prosper. None will sit on the throne of David or rule any more in Judah. So, Jeremiah prophesies judgment concerning three successive kings, all descended from the righteous king Josiah, two of his sons and one of his grandsons. But Jeremiah is sent to uh, the king of Judah, the palace of the king of Judah, proclaiming his message. And we have to assume that uh, successively he went to each of these kings individually. He gives the kings um, an option for obedience with a positive outcome. He says, do what is right and just, rescue uh, from the hand of the oppressor, the one who's been robbed, do no wrong or violence to the foreigner, the fatherless or the widow, and do not shed innocent blood in this place. For if you're careful to carry out these commands, then kings who sit on David's throne will come through the gates of this palace riding in chariots and on horses accompanied by their officials and their people. So each of these kings, we have to assume, had these options for obedience. But each of these kings chose the second option for disobedience, and they all experienced very different outcomes. This is the prophesied outcome for disobedience. If you do not obey these commands, I swear by myself that this palace will become a ruin. I will surely make you like a wasteland, like towns not inhabited, I will send destroyers against you, each man with his weapons, and they will cut up your fine cedar beams and throw them into the fire. And then the Lord says that other people and other nations will hear about God's wrath, and they'll ask, why has the Lord done this? And the answer will be, because they worshiped and served other gods. This is all about the worship of false gods and the rejection of Israel's true God. King Shalom was the first that's mentioned Shalom's the son of Josiah, who succeeded his father as king. He was taken captive into Egypt around 609 B.C., and he died there. Uh, the Lord next reminded King Jehoiakim of his righteous father, Josiah, and what a, a wonderful man that he was. But Jehoiakim was living lavishly until he died. And so the Lord says, verse 18, Therefore, this is what the Lord says about Jehoiakim, son of Josiah, king of Judah. They will not mourn for him. Alas, my brother. Alas, my sister. They will not mourn for him. Alas, my master. Alas, his splendor. He will have the burial of a donkey dragged away and thrown outside the gates of Jerusalem. And indeed, of course, that, um, that death occurred somewhere around 597 B.C. Uh, during the various assaults by Babylon before the final conquest occurred. Next comes his son, uh, Jehoiakim's son, Jehoiakin. Uh, it's a little bit of a tongue twister, but um, spelled similar. But uh, uh, Jehoiakim is the father. Jehoiakin is the son. He was also to be uh, disgraced and discarded. The Lord says, Jehoiakin, son of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, even if you were a signet ring on my right hand, I would pull you off. I will deliver you into the hands of those who want to kill you, those you fear, Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon and the Babylonians. And indeed, he was taken into captivity uh, with Babylon to Babylon, and um, he never returned. He did not um, uh, survive captivity in Babylon. So the Lord reminds the kings individually and collectively that there is a positive outcome in store for those who obey 
and serve the Lord with integrity. But there is a price to pay for governmental rulers if they do not um, follow the ways of the Lord, if they mistreat the poor, if they mistreat the widows, if they shed innocent blood. All of these things carry consequences. And so, Lord, we pray for our political leaders at every level. Lord, uh, in the U.S., it's um, local, state, and federal leaders. We pray, Lord, that they would serve you in righteousness. We pray, Lord, that they would not shed innocent blood, that they would carry just standards forward for everybody, every nation, every tongue, every tribe, um, every ethnic group, every individual, every collective group. Lord, we pray there would be equal justice for all, that they would behave and and lead um, in a righteous way, and that our nation would be blessed. We pray this, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for listening to this episode of The Whole Word. It was brought to you by Whole Word Fellowship and the Northern Virginia House of Prayer. If you were encouraged, please share our podcast with your friends. We'd also appreciate it if you'd hit subscribe in your favorite podcast app and take a few moments to write a review. If you'd like more information on our church and our ministry, you can go to wholeword.net or wholewordpodcast.com for more information. Thank you again, and may the Lord Jesus bless you today and always.